In this video, I'm going to compare the 2019 Beatles singles box set with the original UK 45s. If you're looking for a cute unboxing video, then I'm afraid you've come to the wrong place. But if you're looking for a serious comparison between sound and production quality, keep watching. Hi, I'm Andrew from Palagram Auctions. And as you can see, I've just taken delivery of the 2019 Singles Collection box set. When this set was first announced late last year, I, like many Beatles collectors, rolled my eyes and shook my head. There was no way I was buying this. My decision was backed up when pre-release reviews from some notable audiophile sources criticised the sound quality and the mastering. This appeared to have an effect on potential buyers who, like me, were maybe on the fence about buying this set, and as a result, many cancelled their pre-orders. When the set was finally released, the early criticism seemed justified, and aside from the usual complaints about warped discs, it was the sound quality that seemed to surprise and disappoint many. However, there was something bugging me about this, something I really couldn't understand. How could the team at Abbey Road, the highly respected, award-winning team who'd bought us the universally praised and much-loved 2014 mono LP box set, have got this one so wrong? The engineer in charge of cutting these discs, Sean McGee, said that in mastering these singles, he'd used the original analog cutting tapes and even attempted to match the cutting settings with the original 1960s cutting notes. Now that sounds to me like the way it should have been done, but why were so many people unhappy? The only way to find out was to do something I promised myself I wasn't going to do. Order the box. And here it is. And here is a set of original 1960s UK first pressing 45s. I'm going to play them all and find out what all the fuss is about. Now, let me say straight off the bat, I'm happy with the original 45s and the way they sound. They were never meant to be sonic masterpieces. Just the most exciting sound you could put onto a little bit of plastic back then. After all, these were the mixes that the Beatles approved and which captivated millions back in the 60s. And that's good enough for me. Firstly, I think there's one thing that everyone agrees on. It's a well put together, great looking set. And look at all these fabulous picture sleeves. Well, all except this shocker. No? Don't adjust your device, you're not losing signal. This image really is badly pixelated. A lot of people could have done a lot better than this. How on earth did this get past quality control? Anyway, back to this set and let's have a look at the discs themselves. They all look very nice inside their individual polylined inner sleeves. But what about the quality of the vinyl itself? Well, having weighed them all, I can tell you that their average weight is 39 grams, which is a touch more than the 33 grams of the originals. I'll be listening to them all on this Project Carbon Esprit turntable, which is fitted with an Autophon 2M blue stylus. These are connected to a Riga Phono Mini Phono Amp, which goes into a name Supernight Amp. The speakers are UK made neat petite bookshelf speakers, and there's also an external Tannoy 10 sub. The only thing I'm going to touch on the equipment is the tone arm. I'm not going to adjust the volume, EQ, speaker placement, or even my seating position. Okay, I'm ready and set up here with a nice cup of tea, so let's go. Well, that was an amazing and very interesting experience. First, I'll give you the headlines, and then I'll go into some more detail about some of the significant sound differences between the discs. Now, let me start off this review by saying, I think this is a great sounding set of discs. A lot of people who bought this set were disappointed with the sound quality. And to be honest, that's not surprising. Because for over the years, technology has given us better and better sounding versions of these songs. And then to suddenly be confronted with the true sound of the original discs must be quite a shock. 
I think the Abbey Road team achieved what they set out to do, to produce a set of discs which sound like the original singles. It's clear that they've had to make a few compromises in order to sweeten the sound for the modern ear and system, but by and large, I think they succeeded. If you're looking for a more modern, maybe sweeter sonic experience, I think you should head towards the Mono Pass Masters or another singles box set. But if you're after an authentic sounding set of Beatles 45s, as the Beatles meant you to experience them, then you should get yourself this set. Now I'm not saying it's perfect, because there are a few significant fails along the way. Firstly, the painstaking research, listening to all the original singles, finding the tapes, unfortunately didn't extend to noticing that the mixes of Please Please Me and Ask Me Why were in fact the wrong mixes. They used the LP mixes, and not the ones which were used for the original 45. Are these mixes really lost, or was it just poor research? Secondly, did they say that they fixed at least one of the bad edits on She Loves You? But the one just before the Pride Can Hurt You 2 line is worse than ever. That one really shocked me. Cutting a record in the 60s was a real art, but as McGee himself says, the lathes at Abbey Road these days are more fire and forget, and easier to use. Well, easier, in my book, doesn't always mean better. Slight reductions in the upper mids and increases in the lower mids appears to have been the EQ choice on most of these discs. This had the desired effect of making them a little less harsh, but also made the earlier discs a little less exciting sounding. However, it improved the sound on some. One thing that struck me while listening, especially with the early singles, is that I got the impression they ran a little faster. So I went back and recorded the 1963 discs onto the computer so I could see the timings exactly. Please Please Me, although being a different mix, ran two seconds slower than the original single mix. Although there was less difference on From Me To You, She Loves You and I Want To Hold Your Hand, the new discs still ran at least a second slower. Who knows why this was? If you know why, please let me know in the comments. Okay, so for those of you who like detail, here's some of my observations on some of the individual discs. First up, Love Me Do is a digital copy of the original single, so you can't truly compare it. It's a nice sounding dub though, and I couldn't detect the snippet of the second disc they edited in. Please Please Me, the original wins hands down. As I've mentioned already, the version used here was not the original singles mix. They used the LP mix, which has more reverb and no volume increases on the five guitar notes just before the Come On sequences. Ask Me Why is also the wrong mix. The original was much drier and, in my opinion, better. From Me To You has some reduction in the upper mids, which softens it slightly, but also reduces the track's energy. There were already some known issues with the edits in She Loves You, but as I've already mentioned too, the edit before Pride is worse than ever. I Want To Hold Your Hand is the best sounding mix of their early singles. The new disc has slightly more bass, which does nothing to improve this already perfect mix. Can't Buy Me Love and A Hard Day's Night both have the upper mids rolled off a little, but still sound great. The first pressing of I Feel Fine was cut very hot, and the opening guitar note is always distorted on first pressings. The new disc benefits from some high mid reduction, and this is the first of the new discs I prefer over the first pressing. Ticket to Ride is one of my favourite mono mixes in its original form. The new disc has a bit of a bass boost which pushes up the dull plodding bass line, which does nothing to improve it. The new disc of Help lifts the high end a bit, which improves things a little, but there's no hiding the fact that this is an atrocious recording of a great song. We Can Work It Out was always a little soft, and the new disc doesn't attempt to fix that. It's just a bit quieter. Day Tripper is another great sounding first pressing disc, which is almost perfect in my book. Again, the new disc is a little quieter, which is a shame. 
The first pressing of Paperback Writer is a hot mess. It's cut way too loud and full of distortion and confusion. Something the new disc thankfully fixes and it's much more enjoyable. Eleanor Rigby is a great mix, but again, cut too loud, making the first pressing distort easily after a few plays. The new disc is an improvement. Strawberry Fields Forever, however, is very close. The new disc has a little upper mid roll off and slightly upper bass boost, but it's overall very nice. Penny Lane was cut too loud on the original and like Eleanor Rigby, wore and distorted very easily. The new disc sounds very nice and isn't too loud. All You Need Is Love is the only original 45 with two different Matrix endings. Dash 1 and Dash 2 discs appeared almost simultaneously, but there's no noticeable difference in sound between them. The 1967 pressing is quite harsh in the upper mids, making John's nasal delivery sound unpleasant. The new disc smooths this out and is a much more comfortable listen. It's also got a slightly longer fade out. First pressings of Hello Goodbye and Lady Madonna were both cut very hot. Hello Goodbye is tamed a bit, which improves the sound on the new disc, but Lady Madonna is as loud and brash as the original, which while not to everybody's taste, is exactly how it was meant to be. We all know about the mixing difficulties they had on Hey Jude, but there's little difference between the two here. I'd say the high end is lifted a bit on the new disc, but they both sound very similar. I love the original Mono 45 mix of Get Back. Everything is so well mixed and rocks along really nicely. The new disc has a slight bass boost, which makes it sound rather muddy and spoils it, I think. The Ballad of John and Yoko was the first stereo single in the UK, and it's my favorite sounding first pressing disc. A super clean, perfectly balanced mix with a great bass and a real breath of life overall. The new disc, like Get Back, has a little more bass, which muddies it a little bit and reduces the overall openness of the original. Something and Let It Be are both very similar, each with a slight bass boost, but otherwise very nice. Another reported issue with this set was that of warped discs. Now, having just played them all, I noticed a few were uneven on the turntable. However, I didn't detect any effect on the sound quality whatsoever, so I can live with that. If the sight of a slightly uneven disc spinning on your turntable makes you feel uncomfortable, then maybe you should give up buying new vinyl, because there's a lot of that type of thing about. The chance of getting a set where every disc is 100% flat is virtually impossible without sending back multiple sets. The booklet in this set, whilst including some fairly interesting information, is a little disappointing, especially when it comes to the images of the original records. Having spent many years photographing Beatles records, I can't understand why such a quality archive edition such as this would use poor quality copies. Look at these creased and worn sleeves. Why couldn't a little more effort have been made into finding better examples? And why not straighten up all the discs inside the covers? As you can see, some are at an angle. It just looks sloppy and rushed. So finally, to sum up, considering how much it would cost to find a mint set of original UK first pressing 45s, this set is a no brainer, especially if you want to hear how these songs sounded when they first came out. And now that the price has dropped, I highly recommend getting it. So we're at the end. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up and consider subscribing because there'll be more videos along very soon. But right now I'll say thanks for watching and bye for now.